Insert heavy breathing. I love Hondas. Which Hondas do I love? Honda Integras, DC5s and DC2s. So much so that I've got a DC5 and a DC2. What? What's this? A Honda Integra DC2, my favorite thing. Um, I absolutely love these. Why are they so good? They're renowned as being the best front wheel drive car ever made. I didn't say that, although I agree with it because they're absolutely insane. And look at it, they're just a timeless classic. This in particular is a 96 spec. So the Honda Integra DC2 Type R, this is a JDM version. So we got them the Type R between the years 96 and 2000. 2001? 2000? Yeah. Um, in that time, the only change we saw was the 98 spec. So on that particular vehicle, we went from four stud to five stud. We got a different inlet manifold a different and reworked exhaust manifold. So basically it was still the same power um, from a 1.8 litre VTEC engine, which produced 198, 200 horsepower. Um, but you got more mid-range, so it was a lot more drivable, a bit more torque and more power in the mid-range as well. So yeah, it was all around a better package. What else did you get with it? You got a Torsen diff as well. So you had a limited slip diff from factory multi-link suspension at the back, double wishbone suspension at the front, and they were just absolutely perfect. When they were designed and made, on the, in the designing process, they were, I'm gonna waffle like hell now, because I love Hondas. <laughs> uh, in the designing process um, and testing, they modified the suspension link setup on the rear, so as you lift off, it would start to oversteer to make it have characteristics of a rear-wheel drive car. So that meant you could get it to turn in like super quick, just lift it off, unsettle it, fire it through, Ooh, pull it through on that diff with all those 200 horsepower screaming out the bonnet. And yeah, as I said, I love the look of these. I just think they're an absolute classic. I think they've aged incredible. I'm sure a lot of you out there will agree with me with that. On this one, it looks extra spicy. Why does it look better? Because it's got period correct parts. What do we have? Spoon carbon front lip. Genuine Phil's bonnet, Jay's racing wings, wider fenders to help get over these massive NTO3 Enkai wheels. We've got a staggered setup, so the front is actually wider than the rear. We've got a five stud conversion on this because it is a 96 spec car. It's super clean. It's in championship white. It's got this stupidly rare gurney flap, this is called, made by the OG's password JDM. I've always wanted one of them, could never get one, never gonna get one now. But yeah, absolutely incredible. But, but, this has had many, many workings, so we need to get into the bonnet, don't we, and have a little mooch of what's going on. K20, but it's not just any K20, is it? Come on, there's a turbo over there. This is a genuine Type R K20 as well, so from stock it'd be 200 horsepower, it's a European K20. Yeah, so we've got a uh, big old turbo conversion on it. It's such a well set up engine bay as well, super clean. Everything's just set up really nice. Got all the hybrid racing parts as well for the engine conversion because they are the best if you know your K swaps. I'm not saying that because I'm biased, but they are just the best. So obviously hybrid racing, wiring conversion, radiator. What else have we got? Passport mounts, other things, many, many things. But yeah, instead of producing around 200 horsepower naturally aspirated, thanks to that beautiful wishy turbo on there it's now pushing as i push the bonnet lovely little segue there uh 350 350 horsepower in a car that weighs not too much over a ton is going to be an absolute party um drivetrain wise as well i can't remember if it's got a lower final drive i think it does so it's probably got a spoon one in it because that is the go-to. Uh, Kaz diff as well, um, to get all that power down. Just go for drive, shouldn't we, Dave? Right, that, that's enough, that's enough. I think I'm gonna use the SD card up. Join us inside the Honda Integra DC2 Type R. Yeah, what's it like? Well, over my side, I have a different Recaro seat. I think, is it a pole position? I think it is. I can't see because I'm sat in it. Um, 
but I'd argue that the standard seats are actually more comfortable. But, but if you're going to do some track driving or spirited driving, you do need a fixed position seat to keep your ass in. And it's got more bolster support. Yeah, my seating position is lovely. I'm sat right down on the floor. Still got to, I just can still move it backwards and forwards, which is fantastic. I've got the steering wheel in the exact position I want it. And talking of steering wheels, it's got a personal steering wheel, which is top tier. Although it is leather, I would have preferred a suede one, just because I like the way it feels. Let's test the horn. The horn's been wired in. That's how you know it's a good build, because generally when people change the steering wheel, they don't bother with anything else. So yeah, it's a good telltale sign. Nice little test I like to do. The shifter, absolutely unreal. It's done by my buddies over at Hybrid Racing in America. They know what they're doing. They're not here to mess about. So yeah, you can adjust the throw of the shifter where the shifter is in relation to the steering wheel. It's just an impeccable piece of kit. And linked up, I think it's still got, yeah, it's still got standard DC5 uh, shifter cables, which are perfect anyway, so shifting's just lovely. Uh, braking wise, we have on the front of, I think the Renault Clio Brembos, but yeah, they're spot on. Braking is incredible. EBC RPF pads, which are very bitey, aren't they, Nathan? Um, yeah, so that's really good. Plenty of gauges so I can see what's going on. Nathan can see what's going on. Down here we've got a switch which says on or off. That controls the boost. Obviously we've got it in a in on position, which means high boost, because we're not here to play no games, are we Nathan? No, we're not. And with that, we drop it down some cogs because we're into bends. Send her on! We're on now, yes! <laughs> Three hundred fifty horsepower in a very light car like a DC2 is uh, spectacular. I love the DC2 platform, as you can probably tell. Well, I've given away a few clues. I've got one. I'll say it again. <laughs> yeah, they're just brilliant. This whole car has been built to a very high standard. We do have quite a lot of camber at the front to get these um, big old 17-inch in NTO3 end kais to fit in the arches, which means it does track around quite a lot. But on track. I can guarantee it will just come to life and when you do start hooking it through the corners it's absolutely sublime. Suspension wise we've got Meister R's which are the go-to Honda coil over, over here in the UK. And while we're talking about DC2s, if you're looking to buy one, there's a few things you should look out for. Obviously they're hiking up in value now, so I'll let you into a secret. If you want one with its original engine, matching numbers, that's American stuff, but yeah, that'll make it mean it's worth more. They love to rust. They love to rust. Rear arches, sills, boot floor, rear chassis legs. That's where you've got to be looking if you look to buy one. Obviously, if it's still got a B18 in it, make sure it's not smoky. Make sure it's not knocky. They do like to um, eat bearings if you don't keep the oil topped up, which people do do. I know that because I bought mine with a blown bottom end. See, I'll tell you again, I've got, I've got a DC2. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they're just absolutely cracking cars. As long as you've got one that's all up together, it's been looked after well. And don't be, um, don't be blinded by underseal as well. Pe people with Japanese imports cake them in underseal. Usually, in my uh, experience, that's the hide stuff, i.e. rust. So be very careful with that. And yeah, like we said in other videos like well buyer's guides have a look in those rear arches see what's going on and obviously crash damage stuff like that have a very good look yeah knocky stuff make sure it's still got the s9 gearbox with a limited slip dip in if it's a b series yeah make sure it's still got all those good bits and hasn't been messed about with too much but if it has been messed about with i'm going to keep going nathan make sure it's got jdm JDM modifications because that means they're good not crappy knockoff fake stuff and there's lots of fake stuff out there as an investment over here in the UK DC2s and EK9s have started creeping up but they're not anywhere near what they are abroad um, so if you want one get one now it's a worthwhile investment trust me on that one and with that Nathan it's time to give it some boost
sounds unreal. Absolutely unreal. When you get one on track, or even just in some twisty roads like this. Oh, for me, they're just unreal. So like the B18's like 200 horsepower, revs to 85, I think it is. 8,500 RPM. With that limited slip diff gearbox, if you put a lower final drive in it as well, they're just incredible. They just absolutely rip on B roads, tracks. Oh, good suspension, good tires, good brakes. Buy one. Is there anything I don't like about DC2? Nathan, oh. Um, the original seats, the SR, Ricaro SR3s, um, could do with being lower. You can get lowered seat rails. Well, you used to be able to back in the day. I'm trying to find some for mine now. If you've got a pair, let me know, because I'll buy them. Um, yeah, they're a bit too high. So yeah, the standard seats are too high, although they're absolutely incredibly comfortable because they're top tier seats. Recaro's who find an EK9s, DC2s and DC5s are the best. That's why everybody buys them and why they're worth so much money. But they are too, too high on the rails as standard. That's my only thing. And fifth gear is a bit too long in a DC2. So it's just, just like, there's not enough torque and power there to like pull through when you're on a racetrack. So you go first, second, third, fourth, then it's like bogs. So yeah, that's something else. You could do with a six speed box. So you get the ratio shorter. That's it. Yeah, six speed box, lower seat rails. Come on, let's go. Gotta go down again, don't I? So Honda loves to rev, it loves it. Even with a turbo on. Oh, she's spinning. Oh, yes. Well, what do we think of the DC2 Type R? Well, I'm very sweaty, um, very smiley, and I have one anyway. So obviously I'm very, very biased. I love them. Um, with a cave series in, very good. Very, very good. Obviously you've got a little more torque. It's got a turbo one, so you've got more power. But for a DC2, it needs to be a B18, in my opinion, just because it's more raw. A DC5, they're a lot, they're a refined version of the DC2. I'm sure you'll agree with me, but albeit my one's totally motorsport. But um, yeah, to get the most potential out of a DC5, you have to spend loads of money on them because uh, they're just a bit too just a bit too refined, a bit too soft as standard. But at DC2, they're more raw out of the box. Um, and you don't really have to spend money on them to get that fizzle in your tin corn. I have firmly got it. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely incredible. What's your favorite Honda? Let us know in the comments below. What's your favorite Honda? You've always said DC2, haven't you, Nath? Yeah, cool. Or oh, is mine a DC2 or DC5? I'm gonna say I'm equally torn because they're both incredible, because I have both. And I don't wanna upset one of them. Uh, Honda gods. <laughs> yeah, if you've liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It does help our algorithm, so give that little notification button a little tap, 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 a roo. That would be greatly helped for us. Uh, don't forget to follow us on uh, Instagram, Facebook, at Dreamcars Giveaways. Um, and follow me at Cybucknall for more Honda content, <laughs> if that's what you're into. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. If there's any car you want to see on the page, do a little bit more of an in-depth reviewing because it's extra spe oh, special, can't even talk. Let us know, it's all that adrenaline, I'm absolutely pumped. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one.